so for the back i only need my shoulder line armhole line and my waist line whatever my waist line will be now i'm going to do my markings okay i'm going to transfer the measurements there so eight and a half here for my um armhole line then my waistline for my back is 15 inches so i'll stop there so i can just decide to bring this closer and i'll create a straight line okay I'm just creating a line the lines are not measured okay i just created a line so just like we did for the front we're going to create a margin of where we are starting from, where our center back is. Remember for the front, we took note of our center front. As you can see. So this line indicates our center front. So we're going to look for the line that indicates our center back. And to look for that line, that means you're using the width of your bust circumference divided by 4, which we did earlier, which we got 9 and half so depends on the point you want to start from i want to start from two inches away i want to start from two inches away so i can start from no inches at all so that means this this point is where it will end right so i'm going to look for that space i want to work with with this let me check that okay here and there. Therefore, my nine and a half inches will end at that point. That means my center back will start from here. And the same thing will apply here. My nine and a half starts from here. So this becomes my center back. Okay. I'm going to straighten that line. Straighten that line. So I'll square that up. The shoulder line. Okay. As you're done with that, that means my line has to square up. We're measuring from here towards this point. Okay. So I'm going to put my shoulder measurement for my back piece. Remember, it is what seven and a half. So you mark your seven and a half. Still going to come down on the chest area and mark seven and a half. Then I'll square that up in a pen. Uh, why I usually use a pen is just not to make this line visible. Okay. So remember the shoulder drop. Remember the shoulder drop. Very 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 important. I'm still going to do one inch. So we have one inch, right? Yes, we do. So, we're going to do what? We are going to look for the midpoint again for the back. The same thing we did for the front. And for the midpoint, coming by half inch. Remember, we are working towards this point, all right? So, that will be my aim. I'll come in at that point. This is already my required measurement. Or is there anything added? No. That means my curve will go from this point to this center point here to this point so I'm going to do that right away okay so you're going to let the curves fall in place let the points rather fall in place then you're going to take it that way then on your neckline remember on the shoulder line you're going to create your neck Remember the width for the front. Yes, we'll be going back and forth to the front because some things you apply at the front, you must apply it at the back. So remember the front we did. If you remember, we did a width of three inches, right? So this width must equal the width of your back. Okay. This applies in almost all cases. Okay. So that three inches must come here. The width. Then is the length that may differ. You know why? So that I'll show you why right away. Let me do my shoulder drop. So from that three inches width, you're going to drop the shoulder. Remember, the shoulder must drop 
you do not have a straight line at the shoulder um, um, points yeah so as I was saying to bring this shoulder line and the shoulder line to match up to match up when you're sewing so by the time you sew the shoulder line and the shoulder line they will match up the seams will match up then for the widths as I said you can make it whatever you want for but for a basic dress you can just go one inch down and use your cord to connect the points so I'm going to connect the points like so so there we have the back neckline and the shoulder line so what's next for us is to take note of our back now look at your back right now as you're watching this video your back has a curvature after your shoulder blades yes those bones that connects to your arm i think they're called shoulder blades yeah when you watch that point coming down to your hip line it's in curve form it is not straight therefore we're going to apply that principle all right so from your shoulder blades right so we're going to start approximately from our shoulder blades so i'm going to take this half measurement of my armhole i'll take it all the way from my shoulder line so all the way from my shoulder line i have i have this uh hmm. that's four four and seven eighths of an inch seven eighths oh did I say four and seven eight or four and seven eight four and seven eight that's just one dot to get five inches so that's this point right so I don't actually need the line then at my waistline all right at our waistline now we're going to create a new center back this will this straight line is not how my body is okay my my back has a very nice curvature and I, i'm sure you also have same therefore we are going to apply it so i'm going to come in by one inch one yeah then i'm going to connect this one inch all the way to that point we looked for earlier so which i assume to be where my shoulder blade starts from or is ah. now i get another mark okay so this becomes my new center back now it's your option is up to you any how you want it you could have taken your bust span measurement yes we also use the bust span measurement um, bust distance yes to determine where the dart will fall at the back also so you would have you could have started from this line then take in your your curvature or you can still take this line as your new center back and take in your um, measurements that's the bust span measurements so i will start from my new line yeah so i have four inches and up here also i'll measure the same four inches so i'm going to connect that line i think i have double dots here let me confirm all right and i'm going to go all the way to one inch below my bust sorry this is not your bust line so I'm going to go all the way to one inch below your angle line. Remember, we don't have bust line here. Okay, so I'm going to connect this all the way, the straight line. Then the dart intake for the back is still the same thing that we did for the front. Yes. Now, if you have more curvature at your front if you have more fullness rather if you have more fullness that you have your busty or your client is more busty than this measurement then you would randomly divide this 
measurement because, because what we're doing here is one quarter of your bust minus one quarter of your waistline that's exactly what we're doing for this that intake so one quarter of my bust is this line back then minus one quarter of my waistline this is the difference this difference is what you use as a, that so if you do that one quarter of your bust minus one quarter of your waist and at the end of the day see that the figure is large right if you have such large, large figure you can take a more you can take more numbers to the front so let's say someone's difference is two inches you can decide to do two and a half for the front then the remaining one and a half will go to the back instead of making the back two inches and the front two inches or you can as well make the front three inches right then make the back one inch because where you need that fullness is at the front so be able to accommodate the bust very well okay i hope you got that right so for me what i had was one one quarter so i'm still going to share the same amount because it's the difference is not much the difference for mine is not much okay so i'll do the markings one one quarter. then we're going to connect create our uh, that Oh, I didn't do that right. Okay. So at this point now, I'm going to start putting the measurements. So what was my waist measurement? We well, can decide to put in all the total measurements required, which is your quarter of your bust, which is nine and a half. Of course, when you check it, it's going to be the same thing. Remember, this is our new line. We are removing this line. This is the new line to form your curve at the back. Therefore, you start from the line to measure. So if I want to put my nine and a half, it will be here. Let's see if it's the same thing. Quarter of your of your waist. We got 33 and a half earlier. 33 divided by 4 like that. Is 8 to 1 quarter, which is here. So whatever the difference is, what we're going to use for the dart intake. So which is one one quarter, which we did here. So it's practically the same. Okay, so at this point now, we'll we are going to remeasure this at uh, nine and a half. I think we have we are short with one quarter. So connect this back. Then you're going to connect this line. So at this point now we are done with our back so we're going to do the cutting remember i want to follow my that my basic that intake okay i'm doing my basic that intake i just showed you the other way because of i felt like showing you so please don't get confused so let's talk about the side seam so this point becomes our side seam so by the time i take in these two inches whatever i have left should be equal to the back side seam so i'm going to cut just watch me as i cut so now before cutting i'm going to throw this pattern so what i mean is i'm going to come out on this center line i'm going to come out by three quarter of an inch okay can come out by one inch depends but a quarter of an inch of this work so when you come out by two quarter of an inch with your ruler you're going to connect that amount back to the dart here okay or you can just flow it out just flow the line out okay you can decide to flow it out and you decide to connect it to this point but i prefer to flow it out then you're also going to connect this back to 
the armhole line so taking this taking this allowance out okay this is like an allowance to true your pattern true your pattern means to to make your um, your lines equal by the time you are done cutting the pattern okay so this is very important especially for um, that that are slanted so when you're working with darts that are in slant position something like this you need to do the truing of your pattern even on straight lines too it's still important okay so just watch me as i do the cutting so So at this point, we are done cutting out the front. This is our front pattern. So by the time you take in these darts by the side, that when you fold it, if you're making just a basic cloth and you don't want to cut out your darts, you don't want to eliminate your darts, you want your darts to show on the dress. That means at the end of the day, you'll be sewing like this. You'll be sewing this way and your seam, okay? Your seam will remain on the dress. The seam allowance here, the dark seam will remain at the dress, okay? So when you do this, you're going to be creating fullness towards the apex, as well as the bust point. Remember, this is my center front, okay? This is my center front. And this will be placed on fold, okay? okay this is placed on fold, there is a sign. In case this is going straight to the factory where they produce dress, once you put this signal, they will know that it's on fold. Okay. All right. Any same same stress, any same stress or any joiner that knows how to read a that knows how to read the signs in patterns will be able to read that. So this will be cut on fold. Then. You can create a notch here for the dart and also at this point. So if you also take in this dart here, if I take in this dart here also, that if I don't want to totally eliminate my dart, that I want to take it in, I'm taking in the one 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 quarter inch dart that we created for my own measurements. Okay, depends on your own measurement too. So you can see we are succeeded in creating fullness at this point so if i pin this down i pin this down this is what we're going to have and at the end of the day if i match this up with the side seam from for the back okay if i take taking all my allowances for the darts okay you can see that the side seam matches so you can see the reason why we added this um extra pattern this extra allowance here at the dark, at the boss dark point. You can see as you're folding, it's not ending up on the initial line you did. It's ending up now on our new line, okay? Just a little bit over, you can trim this off. So it's better you trim outside of your measurement than to trim inward, okay? So quite better. So if you want to cut this open and transfer this dark here, yes, you can transfer the boss dark to the waist dark so that it's only the um ways that i will have all the that so i'm going to show you that briefly 